This is Hawaii Island. The Big Island of Hawaii is a unique place on Earth, where time seems to move faster than everywhere else. Geologic features of the Americas and Europe that most are familiar with have been formed over hundreds of millions of years, weathered away by time and the environment and the landmarks of today. Less than one million years ago, this was the Big Island of Hawaii. Yep, down there somewhere. We get all these vibrant and varying landscapes from this. Geologic time has a different speed here. Countless volcanic eruptions form this island relatively quickly, and today it is home to both the most active volcano in the world and the largest volcano in the world. But volcanic eruptions are not the only type of disaster to hit Hawaii, even in modern history. Hurricanes, tsunamis, large earthquakes, wildfires, flash floods, botched missile alerts, these are the top 10 most destructive natural disasters to strike Hawaii Island in the last century. Number 10, the 1955 Lower East Rift Eruption. Kilauea's eruption in 1955 lasted 88 days in Puna on the southeast side of the Big Island. Rural residents were shocked by the first nearby eruption in 115 years, fed by a blade of lava 10 miles long and only a few feet wide traveling deep underground. Earthquakes have been ramping up for 10 months, but intensified to 700 in a single day before the eruption. The eruption progressed through four phases, beginning with the first two fissures by Pohuiki Road lasting only a day. The second phase shifted the eruption about a mile east and isolated the town of Kapoho over the next week. Afterwards, earthquakes continued without lava. Then new fissures broke out to the west across the Pahoa Kalapana Road, spilling lava that ran all the way to the ocean near Kahina for a month and isolated the town of Kalapana. The eruption appeared to be over for two weeks before resuming with weak activity. After three weeks, the final surge emerges and almost makes it to the ocean before stalling. As in most Hawaiian eruptions, there were no deaths, but many were evacuated for a full month just days ahead of lava cutting road access from both sides. Large amounts of farmland, primarily sugarcane fields, were covered in the eruption. Adjusted for today, there were $18 million in damages. Number 9. Hurricane Lane Hurricane Lane was a powerful Category 5 hurricane that skirted Hawaii Island in August 2018, with maximum sustained winds of 160 miles an hour. Though direct landfall was avoided, Lane brought with it record-breaking rainfall totals to the east side of Hawaii. The torrential downpours quickly caused the waters in Hilo to raise, flood-prone areas were inundated, rivers surged, and multiple homes along the Wailuku River were evacuated. Between August 22nd and 26th, Hilo saw its wettest three-day period on record, with 30 inches of rain, and Mountain View and Upper Puna saw 52 inches. As the hurricane wrapped northwards around the west side of the Big Island, it was sheared away and broke apart rapidly. Hours later, a strong trough formed over Puna, and heavy precipitation drenched the already saturated area once again. Both of the primary highways in Puna were shut down, as floodwaters littered the roadways with rocks and other debris. Multiple residential subdivisions were inundated with waist-high floodwaters in the night, yet again there were no casualties. There were 152 homes damaged, with 29 of those sustaining major damage in Hilo and Puna. Local emergency management agencies were stretched thin in the storm, as the 2018 eruption of Kilauea and Puna was still ongoing. Hurricane Lane was primarily a miss for the Big Island, mainly as the island received mostly rain, which drains well in the porous lava rock. There was an estimated $20 million in damages. Number 8. The 1950 Mauna Loa Eruption Mauna Loa is the largest volcano in the world, and its 1950 eruption was easily one of the most intense eruptions in the last 100 years. Instruments monitoring ground swelling showed that pressure remained high after lava appeared at the summit in 1949, and that a rift eruption could potentially follow. Almost one year passed before Mauna Loa stirred to life once again. Seismic activity increased steadily in the month leading up to the eruption, peaking with multiple large earthquakes that include a magnitude 6.4 two days prior. The day before the 1950 eruption, the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory put out a press bulletin to raise awareness of the increased volcanic unrest. Quick location suggested that the Southwest Rift was the most likely area for an eruption. The Southwest Rift has some of the mountain's steepest slopes, where lava can travel exceedingly quickly down slope to populated areas. Lava emerged on the upper Southwest Rift with a two and a half mile long curtain of fire made from jets of lava. The eruptive vent would grow to 12 miles long with near continuous activity. Three separate lava flows entered the ocean, destroyed the town of Pahoehoe in the process, and severed the main highway. The records are scarce, the flows consumed about two dozen dwellings, two churches, businesses, and a post office. The eruption lasted 23 days, with the vast majority of lava erupted in the first six days. A similar eruption today would impact over three times as many people living in the area. Number 7. The 2006 Giholo Bay Earthquake The 2006 Giholo Bay magnitude 6.7 earthquake occurred just offshore on the west side of Hawaii Island early morning October 15, 2006. 
Residents near the epicenter were shaken violently, the immediate concern being a possible locally generated tsunami. After a cursory look, the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center and USGS determined that the quake would not generate a tidal wave. Large quakes on the Big Island of Hawaii fall into two general categories, those related to volcanic activity and those that are not. The 2006 earthquake was a deep flexure earthquake associated with the weight of the island stressing the crust and the upper mantle of the earth. Damage from the quake was widespread. The Mauna Kea Beach Hotel had its entire south end collapse and was forced to close the hotel for repairs. Several bridges partially collapsed and rock falls and landslides severely compromised roadways. The earthquake distributed damage along a wide area on the west side of the Big Island. Over 1,800 residences were damaged to some degree, with 62 homes declared unusable and another 151 severely damaged. Due to earthquake exclusions in most Hawaii insurance policies, the damages were primarily at the cost of homeowners. There was an estimated $125 million in damages. Number 6. Hurricane Azel Hurricane Azel wasn't actually a hurricane. Tropical Storm Azel was the most intense tropical storm system to make landfall on Hawaii Island in modern history. 60 mile an hour winds toppled countless 100 foot tall trees on multiple residential areas. As the trees fell, the power grid and road access into residential areas in Lower Puna went with it. 33,000 people lost power in the night, and over the next two weeks, 1,000 customers remained without power. The storm surge that accompanied the system carried with it waves as high as 25 feet to the coastal community of Kapoho, heavily damaging roads and homes. Transmission lines were severed by downed trees that connected the Puna geothermal power plant to the rest of the grid, forcing it into an emergency shutdown procedure. The plant vented steam and 100 tons of hydrogen sulfide in the nearby residential community in which it is located. Soon rumor got out about an evacuation order in response to the plant's noisy release. However, the official order issued advised residents to remain indoors or to evacuate the area if any discomfort was experienced. By this point, however, many a roadway had been cut off by downed trees. Like this one. And the advisory only created additional hazards. Azel was a very localized system, causing heavy damage to the Puna area but missing the majority of the island. Eleven homes were confirmed destroyed in Puna, with another 50 sustaining significant damage. There was an estimated $148 million in damages. Number 5. The 1960 Kapoho Eruption. The 1960 Kapoho Eruption followed the 1959 summit eruption at Kilauea Iki as part of a summit flying sequence. It destroyed the village of Kapoho, the Coast Guard facility, the scenic warm pond, and the Higashi fish pond. Explosions blasted ash and lava high into the air as magma met shallow groundwater in the area, especially over the first day. While lava fountains continued for the rest of the eruption, over 100 homes, businesses, and public infrastructure were destroyed in a single night as lava swept through the town. Local legend recounts that the night before the eruption, an old woman came into the area knocking door to door, asking for food and shelter. After being turned away time and time again, it said that only the Coast Guard lighthouse keeper offered her this kindness. As a reward, the disguised lava goddess Pele spared the lighthouse from the eruption she was about to bring forth. Incredibly, on three sides of the lighthouse, the flow stopped within a few yards, while everything else in the area was destroyed. The 1960 Kapoho eruption lasted a total of 36 days. Its lava flows covered more than four square miles, including almost a square mile of new land beyond the original shoreline. The village of Kapoho was never rebuilt. Instead, the new piles of red cinder were turned into a quarry, harvested to pave the scenic red road. Number 4. The Pu'u'o'o Eruption Returning to Kilauea, the Pu'u'o'o Eruption reigned from 1983 to 2018 on the East Rift, a modern-day record spanning 35 years. It began with multiple fissures that progressed to a single event over several months which then focused the full force of the eruption into episodic 1,300-foot-tall lava fountains. That's about the height of the Trump Tower in Chicago. The sparsely populated subdivision of Royal Gardens was the first to be covered in lava, though it took another 29 years until the last house was taken. After the first three years, the eruption shifted east to Kupayanaha from 1986 to 1992, and lava flowed all the way to the coast through Hawaii Volcanoes National Park and communities from Kalapana to Kaimu Beach. The slow destruction was nearly complete, in those six years, roughly 100 homes were lost in the process, and many treasured areas destroyed, including the communal Queen's Bath, the long black sand of Kaimu Beach, and drain pipes, the world-famous surf break. Resourcefully, several residents moved their houses out of harm's way, and when lava threatened to destroy the Star of the Sea painted church, it was also moved, just in time. One hour later, the ground where the church once stood was buried. 
1992, lava finds a new path out of Puo'o, away from Kalapana and into the national park, where it continued flowing for the next 18 years. Puo'o's final community threat began in 2014, as this lava funneled through a mile-long cracks to emerge as a slow-moving threat above the town of Pahoa, ultimately coming within 160 yards of the Pahoa Village Road. The record eruption came to an abrupt end in the lead-up to the legendary 2018 eruption in the Lower East Rift. Over 35 years, it piled up over 8 tenths of a cubic mile of rock, spread unevenly over 46 square miles. Number 3. The 2018 Eruption on Kilauea The 2018 Lower East Rift Zone eruption of Kilauea was easily the largest eruption in the last 200 years, and happened in a residential area. On the afternoon of April 30th, after weeks of magma overflowing the lava lake at the Kilauea summit, the system gave way beneath Puo'o and lava intruded beneath 13 miles down rift towards the populated area of Leilani Estates. The eruption began on May 3rd on Mohala Street. The next morning on May 4th, a magnitude 6.9 earthquake rocked the southern flank of Kilauea. Roadways were cut off as magma intruded into the area, creating surface ground cracks. Each time lava broke through the ground and erupted, a new fissure was declared. After 10 days, there was 15 separate fissures. As the eruption continued to escalate in Lower Puna, 24 miles away at the Kilauea summit, the shallow magma reservoir drained, creating thousands of earthquakes a day and tall ash clouds above the caldera, which would soon turn into daily collapse events. During these near-daily summit collapse events, hundreds of acres worth of land on the summit floor would drop several yards all at once. Generating the force of a magnitude 5.3 earthquake each time. A month into the eruption, activity focused at Fisher 8, which produced unprecedented volumes of lava that filled the populated Kapoho Bay and inundated the treasured Waiopai Tide Pools, the Aho Anui Warm Ponds, the Kua Okula Public Charter School, as well as surf spots like shacks, bowls, secrets, band-aids, and dead trees. Following the end of the eruption, sand began to inundate Poiki Bay, cutting off the area's only boat ramp, and at least 720 homes were lost over the course of 92 days. There were no fatalities, however there was an estimated $800 million in damages. Number 2. The 1960s Tsunami The 1960 tsunami in Hawaii was caused by the largest earthquake ever recorded, a magnitude 9.5 quake in May 1960 that sent destructive tsunami across the Pacific Ocean. After taking more than 2,000 lives in Chile, the tsunami radiated outward, killing 61 people in Hawaii and 122 in Japan. Warnings from the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center were issued during the 15 hours it took for the waves to arrive in Hawaii. Tragically, a lack of understanding of the warnings led to the major loss of life when the tidal wave ran ashore in the night. There was plenty of time for evacuation in Hilo, Hawaii, as the Chilean tsunami raced across the Pacific Ocean on May 22, 1960. Although warning sirens sounded for more than three hours before the first waves arrived, the meaning of the signals was not clear, as two-thirds of residents thought there would be further notice to evacuate. When the first waves arrived, only a few feet high, many residents remained in the low-lying areas of Hilo, and some even returned home thinking the danger had passed. Hours later, the darkness was filled by a growing rumbling noise, and soon sounds of crashing and crunching. Moments later, a nearly 20-foot wall of water hit the houses, floating them off their foundations. The 1960 tsunami destroyed a residential area of Shinmachi in Hilo for the second time in two decades, and this time it would not be rebuilt. Number 1. The 1946 Tsunami the April Fool's Day tsunami of 1946 struck the northern shores of the Hawaiian Islands, costing the lives of 159 people. A magnitude 8.6 earthquake near the Aleutian Islands off the coast of Alaska generated a roughly 50-foot wave that traveled almost 500 miles an hour across the Pacific Ocean. It took less than five hours for the tsunami to reach Hilo, Hawaii. Some residents saw the signs of what was coming and self-evacuated while others went towards the shoreline to witness the tsunami firsthand. In the hour immediately prior to the tsunami's arrival, an alert was issued over a police radio in Hilo to begin evacuations. The first surges from the tsunami were relatively small. However, following surges filled the bay with a great big black wall of water that flooded the residential area of Shamanchi in Hilo. The tsunami came ashore with several powerful surges, destroying almost a third of the city. Multiple railway bridges connecting Hilo to the island's sugarcane industry failed, 
forcing a change to heavy trucks for sugarcane transportation. The Hamakua sugar mill was also destroyed by the tsunami. La Pahoyhoy, about 20 miles north of Hilo, was decimated, the local school included, claiming the lives of 23 students, four teachers in the process. Today, a memorial in La Pahoyhoy commemorates the events and the tragic loss of life in the 1946 tsunami in stone. One incredible survivor from the 1946 tsunami, a 16-year-old freshman from La Pahoyhoy High School, was washed out to sea as the powerful surges from the tsunami receded. Scrambling in the debris, he coddled together a makeshift raft and soon saw fellow students struggling in the currents, barely conscious. He dragged two other boys onto the salvage raft. The currents carried the boys northwest, with nobody knowing their situation, until a search aircraft spotted the boys, dropped them a life raft, two collapsible oars, and snapped a photo. Battling the occasional shark, the boys drifted along the coast. The next day, a small girl spotted the boys off the coastline, more than 40 miles from La Pahoyhoy, and ran to get help. Three local men immediately swam out and brought the boys back to shore. All three boys survived. In response to the 1946 tsunami, the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center was created to make a standardized and effective warning system for future tsunamis. In addition to the loss of life, there was $27 million in damages. Adjusted for today, that's roughly $340 million. Though the dynamic landscape of Hawaii poses its threats, many people still choose to live on the island, and awareness of its dangers is part of the price of living in paradise. If you appreciate this type of video and want more, please support us on Patreon, and make sure to subscribe. Mahalo.